So here you see a classic uh, grout grind. And what happens is this intersection where you see four tile, which is right up to a shower stall in the utility area, the four tile in the center is incorrectly set. So what happens is there's motion as you're applying pressure while you walk. So what happens is you get a grinding sensation and it eventually pulls the grout out. Now if you step on that tile now, um, you'll notice there's movement with it. So what we're going to do is effectively take the tile out step by step so you have an idea of how to go about doing it and what the cleanest method would be to do it. And then the remedy to assure that it wouldn't happen again. Typically when a tile is set and it becomes loose, um, it's usually laid into a bed of mortar or fortified thin set that is sat too long and possibly skinned over. Usually that's uh, indicative of speed set, which is a fast curing uh, fortified mortar. Um, so when somebody installs like that, they shouldn't really do more than like three to four block at a time. Um, this is a 1616 tile. So they got a little bit ahead of themselves and the end result is that when the tile is pushed down, it's not pushed into the wet bed, it's pushed into the skinned over um, bed of mortar that's troweled down that's already beginning to dry. Now the easiest method to remove the tile, since we already have a break here in the existing grout line, would be to take a hammer and just gently smack on that to crack that corner out and then work your way down into the field area for the tile. Uh, typically where there's grout, usually it'll break right away from the grout and then you can hand at your hand remove the existing grout and more uh, fortified mortar that's on the bed. Um, so we'll take a look at that. Okay, in an up close shot you can see where I struck the tile several times. And the tile is actually popped loose here at its very corner where the grout is seriously eroded and missing. Now once you get into the tile removal and you start getting chips out, eventually you'll get to a point where you'll be able to drive a larger um, run on the chisel and what will happen is you'll be able to pull the tile up in larger sections and you'll take a look at a couple of different things. Where you see the mortar that is still on the tile here, that means that particular section was wet, it was sticky, and it adhered to both the floor, which is here, and to the tile itself. So what happened is that's a proper set, but the remainder of the tile, you can see all this mortar here, is still virtually untouched and it's never been set in. If you look at the lines, you see little white strike lines, and then you really look up close, you'll see a great understanding of what I'm talking about. The wet bed itself, as you can see by the trowel lines, has over skinned, which means it, it, it began drying before this particular tile was set down. If you look at the bottom section of that same tile, you see absolutely no mortar on that broken tile. That's the bottom. That should be sticky. You shouldn't be able to pull up anything more than, than maybe uh, you know, a half a dollar size uh, chunk, and you're getting large pieces here. So what happened is the installer failed to recognize that he trailed out too much of what's called a speed set thin set mortar, which uh, can literally cure within 15 minutes to the surface. So you really need to be quick on that, and that's the product that apparently was used here. Typical VersaBond or uh, fortified mortar allows you um, at least an hour after trowel down that you could still apply tile without having any difficulty with it being adhered to the floor. So this is an error. And you can see it was never embedded into the mortar. All it did was push it down flat. And of course, because it skinned over, there was no adhesion to the tile. Okay, now comes the fun part. Um, there are several machines, Dremel tools, there are different types of rigid tools, uh, Black & Decker make, makes tools, Craftsman makes tools that have the, the uh, vibrating uh, wand on it, um, which is typically a nice way to pull up mortar. You just guide it along and what it does is it vibrates it right off the floor. The only problem with it is it's very messy uh, and I'm trying to reduce the mess. So in order to reduce the mess, because it's a furnished property and there's things here to protect, um, and I don't have to clean up uh, the entire house. I'll use a hand chisel and the way I use a hand chisel is I'll take the edge of the chisel and I'll throw the flat chamfer down and then just gently just hit on top of the, on the back of the, um, excuse me, on the back of the uh, chisel and what that'll do is that'll break that up and I'll break those lines. So in order to put a new tile down 
you have to have a 100% clean bed, no chips, no lines, and certainly no little pebbles or rocks left over. The other portion is too when you're doing the grout area alongside, it's so, uh, so as not to damage the tile that the grout is still attached to, you could actually come down alongside of it and then tilt it on edge just like you're doing with the thin set and just work your way along. And when you work your way along, you'll see that the tile, uh, um, the tile mortar and the grout will also pop right off of the second hand tile next to it. Flip it the other way. Now, I'm not kidding, it is work. It is a little bit involving. It should probably take you anywhere about 30 minutes to 45 minutes to remove one tile, approximately 16 by 16. Okay, as you can see, the tile area is almost uh, completely cleared. You can still see some thin set that has to be chiseled and chipped out. You can see the grade height difference, so it is definitely necessary to remove it. A lot of times you might think you can get away with not taking it all out. You have to remove all of it. This is what it should look like afterwards. Um, this is not fine chiseled, but this just gets the bulk of it out of it. And then this is what you're going to end up with as you're pulling it. Alright, so we try to keep the mess contained to at least its little work area here and uh, not get it all over the house. Okay, once your area is cleaned, what you want to do is make sure you vacuum it up, get all the little pebbles and stones out of it. You want to do a dry fit on a tile. And the reason you want to do that is to make sure two things, you're below grade of the existing tile, which we are. And the other portion is so there's no teeter and that you have a flush plane to apply that tile to. Then you're going to take your tile back out. And when we get back to this, if there's three other tiles in this job are removed, then I'll show you how to mortar it down and apply the tile so it's uh, correctly in, inlaid into the bed and so there won't be an additional further problem. Okay, now we're at the point where we're going to apply the uh, VersaBond mortar mix. And what you want to do when you make your mix is make it so it's not tasty thick and also that it's not runny. You want to be able to see the lines as you pass the trowel through it. Now I'm using a one eighth, um, I'm sorry, a three eighths trowel edge because it's a larger tile, so I want a three eighths bed. And what you want to do is you just want to comb that in and cover every area and leave nothing unturned for the mortar so you get a full bond to the existing floor. And you can use a couple techniques. You can push it by your edge, then come back and break it down. And you want that little row, row, kind of simulates like a corn row. And then once you get that down, you'll be ready to set your tile. Now after the tile is laid, what I recommend you do is just gingerly tap. And what that does is that'll suck the mortar onto the tile and then you won't have to worry about uh, voids or areas that are missed. So I'm going to lay our second pile now. And what you'll do is any tile that squeezes the mortar up, such as this area here. You can use your finger, you can use a paper towel, you can use anything that you want to use just to get the mortar out of that. It doesn't have to be 100% out, but you want it out enough where you can get at least a quarter inch uh, run of grout inside of that uh, joint. And this way, uh, aesthetically, you won't have any issues with the grout coming up or discoloration of the grout as a result of the VersaBond being transparent through the grout. Okay, as you can see, the three tiles are now installed that were removed. Obviously, no grout line. And then what you'll do is you'll wait at least 24 hours before you apply a grout back into it. And then as you do your grout, you want to try to feather your grout into what's already existing there. Um, and again, read the directions on a grout bag. You don't want to have a different shade because you added too much water or too little, little water. So you want to make sure it's done right. But if you wait at least... Um, since we're only doing a three tile area, if you wait at least 24 hours, 
that'll give it plenty of time to to bond and uh, you'll have no issue walking on it at that point in time.